Heaven and Hell, A Thousand to One, by Pastor Park. In 1987, Reverend Park had died from high blood pressure. But by the grace of God, his life was extended for another 20 years. However, for the first four years, he was not able to speak due to his condition. He was about 50 years old when he had come back to life. During his death, the Lord showed him heaven and hell. I want you to know that if you're arrogant and prideful, you'll bring a curse upon yourself. I had a mega church of 5,000 members, but I was struck down by God due to my arrogance. Now I fear God. I used to own property worth about 150 million US dollars. I owned five luxury cars, but after my death experience, I gave it all away. Please remember, salvation cannot be achieved by your possessions but through faith. And now I plead to the deacons, elders, and other church leaders to serve your pastors with all your heart. On December 19, 1987, after I had finished my lunch and while I was resting, I began to feel excruciating pain. It was so unbearable that I felt that I was going to die. Then I lost consciousness. I woke up four months later in a vegetated state and my doctor told me that I would eventually die. All my body parts were mangled very badly from the paralysis and my family had never allowed any of the church members to visit due to my horrible appearance. And then I finally died. When I died, I saw two people enter my room. But these people had entered my room through the wall. And I screamed, who, who are you? My house will crumble down if you do that. And then one of them said, We are angels descended from heaven. We are from God's kingdom. A brilliant light shined around the angels. The angel to my right introduced himself. I run errands for Jesus in his kingdom. Jesus called me and commanded me to go down to the earth. He commanded me to take you to heaven. You are dead, but since your family cries out with such sadness, he desires to grant you a little more time to live. But for now, he desires to show you heaven and hell. He will show you and you will witness to the people of the earth. May the number of the people who end up in hell be decreased and the number of people going to heaven increased through your testimony. This will be your mission. God instructed us to tell you not to delay. If you delay, you will not be able to visit heaven and hell. Then the angel to my left said, The moment you were born and until the moment you had died, I had been with you. At that time, I did not understand what the angel had meant, but now I know. He was my guardian angel. So I said, I cannot go. I will not go. I'm a pastor. I can't meet the Lord in this physical condition. I want to see him as a healthy person. I would probably be receiving more rebukes than compliments from the Lord. I'm prideful and arrogant, and now I'm cursed and sick. How am I going to be able to enter heaven? I'm so scared. Please go back to heaven and ask the Lord to heal me. Then come back and take me to heaven through my dream. Please ask for mercy on my behalf. But the angels were not listening to my arguments. They took my clothes off and said that they were too filthy to be wearing in heaven. They then clothed me in a white gown. They grabbed my hands and we flew straight up to heaven. We flew through the clouds, and as I looked down, I saw the earth becoming smaller. They let me go near an endless golden street. I saw a brilliant shining light, too bright to look at directly. I said, 
Where is the light coming from? It is from heaven, the angel responded. I thought, wow, it's huge. I saw groups of people in white gowns flying ahead. Who are they? I asked. The angel replied, they are the ones who had served God faithfully and trusted in Jesus by obeying and following the lead of the Holy Spirit with all their heart. Their bodies are dead on earth. They are now the souls heading toward heaven. The other angel continued, There are twelve gates in heaven. When a saved soul comes to heaven, they must enter through one of those gates. We were standing in the south gate, but it was closed. As we were waiting, I asked the angel, Angels? Uh, why is the gate not opening? The angel replied, It is because you are not singing the heavenly worship song. I asked, Angels, I was a very prideful and arrogant person, and as a result, I was cursed with sickness. I'm not good at singing earthly worship songs. How am I able to sing heavenly worship songs when I had never heard it before? The angel replied, You are correct, but you must still prepare yourself to worship. You are a prideful person, but prepare to sing. The angels began to sing, and as they sang, I began to sing with them. It became natural to me, and we entered in. The scene of heaven was indescribable. Oh, I can't describe heaven with earthly words. I said, Lord, thank you so much. Even though I'm a very prideful and arrogant and cursed with sickness, you still brought me to heaven to show me around. I then heard the voice of God. My beloved Pastor Park, Yonggyo, I welcome you. You have made a long journey here. His voice was overflowing with love and tenderness. I replied back, crying in tears. Lord! The angels immediately said, You've been a pastor for 20 years. Don't you know your scriptures? There are no tears in heaven. Please stop it. I was not even able to cry. The Lord then asked me five questions. How much time did you spend reading the Word? How much did you give in offerings? How many times have you evangelized to people? Did you tithe properly? How much time did you spend in prayer? I could not answer the fifth question. The Lord rebuked me for that. After you had become a megachurch pastor, you had become very lazy with prayer. Being busy is no excuse to me. I had to repent of it later. The angels will show you many places in heaven and of hell. Look around as much as you desire. You will leave after witnessing many different places in heaven and hell. But the Lord did not allow me to see his appearance. The angels first took me to three different places in heaven. In the first place, I saw little children living together. The second place was where the adults lived. And the third place were where the souls were that had barely made it into heaven. Even though they made it into heaven, they made it in shamefully. Many people had asked me how old the children were. Well, they appeared like kindergarten. And they were not little boys or girls as we know of gender. Each child had their own angel to accompany them. In heaven, most of the souls will have their own individual home. However, there were some who did not have homes. I will explain this later. Moreover, the children did not have their own individual homes either. And I asked, The children are also souls. Why don't they have their own homes? The angel replied, 
just as the people on earth require materials to build their homes. We in heaven also need materials to build here. When a person serves the church and others faithfully unto the Lord, those deeds will become materials for the person's home in heaven. When the materials are provided, the angels assigned to build a saint's home will go to work on constructing it. The children who are below the accountability age have not built up any materials to build a home. In other words, they did not have the time or chance to earn their rewards or materials. This is why they do not have homes. I continued with my questions. What shall I do on earth to provide more materials for my home? The angels replied, There are seven things one must do to build up their materials to build their home. The first is their accumulation of worship and praise to God. The second is their time spent reading the Bible. Third, their time spent praying. Fourth, their time spent evangelizing to people. Fifth, one's offering to the Lord. Sixth, their obedient tithes to God. And lastly, their time spent serving the church in any way. These are the deeds or works of obedience in which one accumulates materials for their heavenly home. If one is lacking in these areas, they will have no materials to build their home. There were numerous people in heaven without homes. Many who did not have homes were actually pastors, deacons, deaconesses, elders, etc. I asked out of curiosity, where do the children live then? The angel replied, They live here. As I looked around, they were gathered throughout the garden of flowers. The garden of flowers was so beautiful, and the fragrance was out of this world. The scene was beyond what I could describe with my words. The second place I visited was for faithful adults. There's a difference between salvation and rewards. This place had so many homes. The homes were built with beautiful gems and rare stones. Some of the homes were as high as the highest skyscrapers on earth. Those people who had faithfully served the Lord while living on earth had their homes built with beautiful gems and rare stones. In this particular place, all the people looked around the age of 20 to 30 years old. There were no men or women in regards to gender, and there were no sick, old, or lame people. I once knew an elder named Oaimun. He had died at the age of 65 years old. He was a very short man, as tall as second graders in elementary school. He had suffered from a rare disease called rickets. However, when it came to the Bible, he was a PhD. He had written many commentaries. I met him in heaven, and there he was tall and handsome. He was no longer sick, but healthy. Heaven is a very wonderful place. I'm so full of expectations. Please believe what I'm saying, beloved people. The third place was for those people who were shamefully saved. This particular village was enormous in size, several times bigger than the second place, where the homes were made of gems and rare stones. I arrived at this place at great speed, riding a golden chariot. 